Hi, I'm Joshua Finn with J&H Aerospace, and this is the build video for the Evo Fire. This is a full house, 1.5 meter discus launch glider, designed originally by Trey and Morisano up in Atlanta. We have adapted it for rocket power, we've converted it to a low winger to accommodate that, and we produce both this kit in its full house form, and we'll also be making available wing kits. So things that you need to know for this aircraft. Since we are producing this entirely in-house, we are making some modifications from Trans hardware kit, which means the wing has a plywood joiner, the control horns are plywood, etc., as opposed to Trans full composite materials. The only change that really means for you is that you need to make one modification in the wing build which is that since the wing joiner is no longer fiberglass, you should fiberglass the join of these wings. I recommend doing that before covering them. Um, Trans videos show you to cover uh, the wings and then join them, but he is using, again, that full composite wing joiner. We don't have access to the tooling to manufacture those at this time, so we're using a plywood one. I have tested this aircraft in this configuration to G-loads that no responsible uh, DLG owner anywhere would ever test it to, and I have not broken the wing, therefore I, it is my opinion that this is actually a stronger wing join than what was originally set up for the kits. For you, though, as the purchaser of this kit, uh, what you need to know is I am not producing new build videos for the wing of this aircraft. Tran has done a marvelous job doing that, and I don't want to take, uh, I, I don't want to copy his work since he's a better machinist than I am anyway. So for the build videos for the wing, follow the links in the description or on our website to get to Tran's build videos for for this aircraft. In addition, there's a full build thread on RC groups detailing how this wing is to be assembled. Um, again, very, very fully detailed. All of the uh, tooling has been included in your kit to, to build out this wing to its full extent. Other than that, enjoy the build video for the Evo Fire. One other thing I will mention though. This kit does include an air start, or sorry, this airplane that I'm showing you here has an air start module. We are not offering these officially for sale right now to uh, flyers who are vetted, as in we judge your competency to be at a level where you can operate this safely. We will sell you um, these on a very, very limited basis. For the rest of you, I recommend obtaining rail buttons to attach to the sides of the fuselage so you can launch this like a typical model rocket. Uh, recommended engines are everything from the uh, Estes C60. Uh, you will want to plug that engine uh, up through Quest D5Ps. I have flown this on an E6 uh, Aerotech motor. We still have some minor issues to work out on that, so I don't recommend... Um, I, I cannot endorse using it yet. Uh, I believe that all of the structural issues have been dealt with. It's not structural, it's purely control system um, that we have some elevator lockup that, that I dealt with. Um, with the stronger springs we're including now, I believe that problem is going to go away. Additionally, when I was flying it, I went outside the aircraft's operating envelope. We'll just say that. Um, so once I have more test data, Probably in the description, there will. By the time you read this, there will already be saying something saying, "Hey, it's already cleared for use on E6 motors." But if not, check back uh, on our website and here um, regularly, and, and at some point that update will go live that we've done whatever modifications. Um, if it requires a, a modification to your kit, we will be sending that in from that uh, that material to you free of charge. Um, so that you can operate the aircraft further. But in the meantime, the, the Quest D5P provides gracious plenty of power for this aircraft. Uh, also the Aerotech uh, D6 motors um, and D2.3 and, and so on. So uh, with that, let's commence with the build video for this airplane. We hope you enjoy it. Okay, so let's have a look at what is included in your Evo kit when you receive it. 
and we'll, we'll mention some of this is not included if, if you're only ordering a wing kit. So if you're ordering a wing kit, uh, you are going to have a roll of Doculam. Um, tail boom is included with the full kit. You're going to have a hardware package. We'll get all this stuff out of here and then we'll put it back safely in there once we're done. So inside your hardware package you're going to have a piece of 013 piano wire for your uh, pulse, uh, for your springs on your tail surfaces. You're going to have a set of push rods for your, uh, for your wing servos. These are included in the wing kit. This carbon rod is the hold down for your servo hatch on your fuselage. You have some spider wire for your pole strings on your tail surfaces. Uh, some of you will prefer uh, beetle on. Um, I don't have all the tooling to properly implement beetle on, so that's why I'm not including it. Um, you really need the uh, little metal crimp rings for those. Um, you're going to have a roll of blenderm tape, body tube. Uh, this is an Estes BT-50 body tube that you're going to use to make your motor mount from. Um, you will have a motor retainer hook. Uh, included in the wing kit, of course, is a uh, throwing blade. Um, this is just a uh, pultruded carbon throwing blade. These work fine for me. Some of you prefer the nice molded ones. You have your wing and tail mounting hardware which is going to consist of a pair of 440 um, wing bolts. Um, note that those are different lengths. It's very important. Uh, one is for the leading edge, one's for the trailing edge. You'll have a matching set of blind nuts for those and you will have washers for them and you're going to glue the washers to the screws so you don't lose them. Uh, then you will have a set of 256 blind nuts um, and the corresponding uh, 256 uh, screws that go with them. And then of course this is some half ounce fiberglass cloth. And again, we'll stick this all back in the little baggie so that it does not get lost. Next up is the, are the materials for your wing kit. Uh, handle this carefully because there are a lot of parts here. This is some 3 16 balsa for your root uh, ribs for your wing. Um, you will have two of these sheets here. These are the inverse ribs for the bottom of the wing. Um, these are what your wing form is made from. Um, so while we're on that topic, this set of strips are for your pair of uh, wing bottom forms. So if you watch trans videos, you'll understand what these are used for. Um, there are also some photos online. This is your set of actual wing ribs right here. This is a set of leading edge strips for the wing leading edge. Um, these are the flap the, sorry, these are the wing trailing edges and flap leading edges, so they're labeled over here which is which. You have your set of wing flaps. The reason these are separate from the flap leading edges is that these are made from light balsa, these are made from harder balsa. And then you're going to have your wing skins. Now you need to pay very close attention to these. So the ones that have this double cutout right here, these are identical. So you can just set them aside. This pair, however, you need to watch out for. You are going to find that they are mirror image, so they have these score lines only on one side. These are the bottom skins for the wing, and you need to make sure that these are a mirror image. Set 
that all together and stow those back away. Lastly, we're going to get into our hardware kit, for, well, sorry, our, our kit for the fuselage as far as all the wood parts. Um, there's one non-wood part here. This is the um, marking template for cutting your motor mount tube to size. So, a bunch of small little bits. Uh, these are bulkheads for the, uh, for the rocket motor mount tube. This is your stab uh, mount pylon and the nose, uh, the, the nose assembly. Um, this is thinner wood. This is 1 16th. Also, these are the uh, nose plug, also to support the nose assembly. Um, stab mount and a plywood uh, bulkhead here for the, uh, for the motor mount tube. This is the hatch assembly for the top of your fuselage. You have some plywood parts here. Uh, your wing kit will include some of these because you need your pair of control horns um, and, and your uh, wing brace, wing joiner, sorry. This is your horizontal stab and this is your vertical tail. And then we have fuselage sides and fuselage top and bottom. You will note we have two uh, style tops of the fuselage. This is the one for the rocket power version. If you want to fly without rocket power, you'll use this one that doesn't have the giant hole in it for your motor mount tube. Okay, so let's get started with uh, the build here for the Evo fuselage. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull out our fuselage sides here, and we'll pull out, for now, just our plywood. Now, there are several different um, mounting options for servos. You are going to want to pay attention to these servo plates here. I'm choosing this one right here. This is for some of the cheapest servos imaginable that really you should consider never putting in a uh, in a DLG. However, they are in mine and they have actually worked uh, surprisingly well. And they're just the cheap three and a half gram servos off of eBay. Um, so since I don't have KST X08s uh, handy, um, this is what I'm going to use. Now, this servo tray here that is narrow, has narrower slots. This is size for KST X08s. Um, there's a Turnigy, uh, let's say KS servo or whatever, uh, that also uh, is the same size. It'll fit in here. And I have tested those KS servo thingies, and they, they actually work uh, quite well. Um, one of our uh, Evo fires out there has those in the wings, and it's working fine. So we'll set this guy aside. Uh, the reason why we're pulling it out now is that it interlocks into the fuselage, and so you don't want to get too far into the build uh, before you uh, have that at the ready. Next, we're going to pop out the fuselage formers here. And as, as is typical for one of my build videos, I have a reject sheet of uh, plywood parts here that is not cut quite all the way through. And that's why I am reserving it for the build video because I'm like, well, I want to really. Hold on one second. It went flying. I went through the effort of cutting it out. I might as well use it. So, um, be careful cutting this other fuselage former out because um, it has the cutout for your motor mount tube. And as such, until it's installed, it's a little bit more on the fragile side. And 
then also you're going to want to cut out these two guys which are basically identical. parts. I'll set this guy aside for now because it'll be a little bit before we start grabbing hold of it. So you need these plywood parts. Actually we can set that servo tray aside for a minute as well. Um, the reason you're going to do that is to remind you that the tail boom has to go in before you install the servo tray or the tail boom will not go in and then you're kind of you're kind of stuck. And let's see, I am building a rocket powered version. Um, this fuselage actually is going to end up with uh, my flying buddy because um, he sold his Evo um, to another customer. And so he's getting this one as a replacement. So these are all the parts you're going to need. Now I'm going to go get a piece of parchment paper so we can build this without getting glue all over my table. Alright, so what we're going to do, this, is, uh, this part of the build is really, really straightforward. So all we're going to do is interlock these pieces in here and glue them in. Now, things that you will want to pay attention to, I'm only going to apply glue up to about right here. We will finish closing up the fuselage. Um, actually, I'm doing this completely out of order too, so um, learn from my embarrassment there on camera. And I'm not editing that out because I want you to see it. So take this fuselage bulkhead and go ahead and insert it in. I want you to see the orientation. There's an alignment key here. Slot down here. The hole goes down towards the bottom. The wing cutout is here, so the hole's on the bottom. Now you're going to take one of these um, wing mounts, you're going to insert it, and it only goes in one way, and it interlocks just like that. Now we're going to take the rear tail boom mounting bulkhead, and we're going to do the exact same thing with it. Just like that. Okay, so that's what you're going to build up. Now I'm actually going to take these back out and I'm going to glue them in place. Um, if you are using thin CA, you can do them um, there as they stand. Um, since I'm not do it this way. So we interlock that all together right there. At this point, I'm going to, this one's going to want to pop loose, now squirt glue in here, like so, we can then apply the other fuselage side.
just like that. Accelerator. It's because it's wood one around by my son. Alright, so that gives us that assembly. Uh, at this point, you could actually technically uh, tr start threading the uh, tail boom through, but we we're, we're going to want to close up this back section before we really try doing that. So, what we're going to do is we're going to lay now we're going to go down here. You can do this in any particular order, but I think this is the, the best to do it in. So what I'm going to do is add glue along here, up to this notch right here. Same thing over on this side. fuselage top only apply glue back to here because you want enough and actually maybe even want to start all the way back here because you want to have enough give for that servo tray to be able to fit in there. And I'm only going to apply glue back to here so I can get this situated before I start pinching the back of the fuselage together. And the top is curved a little bit, so you're going to have to pinch everything in a little bit in that regard. I'm just trying to make this all fit nice and tidy like that. And now, once you're sure if the glue is hardened, mine still isn't. This was still wanting to wiggle in and out a little bit. There we go. Now you can pinch this tail uh, or rear section of your fuselage together like that. Now when I let go, you see what happens. It pops back up. So you want to be real careful what you're doing uh, with this, because it's going to want to it's going to want to wander around a little bit. section. Now be careful with this because this is going to want to, to break if you're not careful. Um, you may even want to get it wet with a little bit of water or rub it on the edge of the table a little to make it curve or what have you. Um, but you're going to have to massage this piece around into a fairly sharp curve. And as you can see, I already cracked mine. I'm not super worried about that because I'm going to be gluing this thing in place and then sanding the snot out of it, um, so it's not a super big deal to me if I, I would have a crack or something like that. Um, the biggest thing is to make sure it all fits in there nice and tidy like. Um, this is not a um, particularly significant structural part. It's just there for streamlining and for holding the whole fuselage assembly together in here to make everything fit nice. Um, so this is not a part that tends to get damaged or, or what have you.
meaning we have speared these into the ground. Um, and this is not one of the parts that breaks. side too. Alright, so at this point we're ready to put in our tail boom. However, as you're about to find out, the tail boom doesn't fit. So, what we have to do is wrap a small piece of sandpaper around the tail boom so that we can sand this all. So what I recommend doing is roll this up real nice. Insert it in here. I didn't roll mine up as nice as I should have. Yeah, maybe a little bit tighter. Probably a little bit too many layers too. And now thread the back of your tail boom into your sandpaper roll. Until it gets snug, it doesn't have to, don't want it super tight. And now we're just going to use this to start sanding this out to sides. Because what you want is for these pinch points here at the top, bottom, uh, and sides, you want those to be almost paper thin. Like I said, this rear opening is not a um, significant structural element. Um, it is there for aerodynamics more than structure. Um, in fact, in my personal Evo fire, I did not even uh, glue this opening to the tail boom. tail boom slides all the way in. Now, I don't know if you can see, but there's a slight lip up here of the, the tail boom is sticking forward about uh, th uh, 3 30 seconds of an inch. Um, that is about the amount that you want uh, so that you can get a, a, good, a good secure mount. You don't need any further than that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to, if I can, there we go. 
we'll slide the tail boom back out. And you want to rough up your carbon here. Just give you a better glue joint. There and right about here. Slide our tail back, our tail boom back in. And then drip glue down in here. the fuselage is not twisted. It is not. And so now our tail is our tail boom is completely secured on the fuselage. At this point, we'll go ahead and drop in our servo tray, which will put up a brief fight until it is completely locked in. in place. This is the point where we figure out that we messed up because I glued the servo tray in backwards. And I broke the front of my fuselage off. That's actually not a big deal. There we go. It's very important that you adhere to the taper on this um, on the servo tray or the fuselage does not close up correctly. Someone will no doubt ask, why is the front of this fuselage set up so narrow so that this is so easy to break in assembly? And the answer is, the widest hatch possible in the narrowest fuselage possible, um, for aerodynamic reasons. Go in here and we're going to squirt glue in up to this notch right here. We'll do that on both sides. Closing the fuselage up all the way because we'll install our nose plug before we get to that stage. And we'll go ahead and close up this stretch of the bottom. Okay, next thing we can do is we'll go ahead and pop out these little 1 16th balsa pieces. Try to pay attention to the orientation of them, although it's not as critical as it might at first appear. The 
because these are roughly square. So I have them all facing the same green direction. Um, that may sound like a weak way to do this, however, we are fiberglassing this entire fuselage, so none of that is as important as it might at first seem. Now what we're going to do is we're going to squirt glue in here. You could actually build out the entire nose plug, uh, or nose and nose plug for inserting this. Um, I'm just doing it this particular way because it works for me. Um, try to get things as neat as you can up here, but it does not have to be super good. I mean, you can see there's some gaps and whatnot on mine. You could sand that before installing it, etc., etc. Uh, the bottom line is I do a whole bunch of sanding afterwards, and again, I'm fiberglassing the, the front of the airplane and whatnot. Uh, and that allows me to just mitigate all of those imperfections. And I just find that an easier way to build out the airplane. This is the fifth one of these fuselages I have made personally, um, and I haven't seen fit to change my methodology. So once this is secure, you do need to sand the front here um, before proceeding because things don't almost never meet up perfectly here. pop the uh, nose block bits off of here. So grain is horizontal on this on all of these pieces. Apologies for the upset child in the background. I don't know what he's upset about.
I just got the front. I'm not going to continue until I have mounted the um, hatch in place here. So the first thing is not to cut out the hatch itself, but to cut out these little long skinny pieces here. Be careful because the grain goes kind of goes across on these. even less graceful of me. So we're going to install that right above the servo tray. Just like this. close like so and then take a piece of scrap something or other and just make sure that there's thing forming up against there to uh, create like a fillet that will prevent your, uh, your hatch from going all the way down. And there we go. Alright, so take some of your scrap wood over here and slice off a strip. going to offset this piece. So what you're going to do is you're going to glue it on here like so. And we're going to bevel it at the ends here. It doesn't have to go all the way to the end. And what we're going to do is run this inside the table so that it gets a little bit of a curve to it. Then you're going to glue that, again, off-center onto this hatch, just like that. You can see I've got a curve to it. Now, go in your hardware pack. And locate your carbon fiber rod. Mine is hiding from me. And what we're going to do is we're going to glue that down. But we're only going to glue it in the middle. So right here. And leave about the same amount sticking out of each end, like that. Take another scrap of wood, build it straight back off of there, graceful. Squirt some more glue here, and press that down. 
now you can now notice we have not inserted the tab here. You can slide this guy in. Notice I have to pull up on it a little bit. And latch it down in like so. Now at this point, if you need to get in here, press down on one end and you can slide it out just like that. Uh, some of our users do prefer to do this and does not have a little tab on the top. Others insist that it is a necessity. That means you decide what you want. It is your airplane. Now at this point, I'm going to sand this whole airplane down. Uh, one thing I'm going to go ahead and do is on this bottom plate, I leave you some excess here, but I already know um, for the way I'm building these that I need to cut this off pretty much just flush with the front of that um, airfoil cut. You will have to do some sanding on this part either way, so just be prepared when you go in and mount your wing uh, that you'll need to do that. Just like that. So with this I'm going to come in here, I'm going to sand everything nice and round all the way back here. Do not sand this wing mount area though. You can sand back here behind it, but don't sand the wing mount area. Everything else is fair game. Don't round out in here obviously, but you can sand round. One of, basically the last thing you're going to do is install that motor pod. You're going to have all your electronics installed and everything before you install that motor pod. Okay, so we've completely sanded our fuselage. So now, what I'm going to do is pop out my um, these little bottom plate shields here. Specifically, I want the 440 blind view, that's not the, uh, the smaller ones. Now, due to the nature of these, they are going to be a very tight fit in here. I kind of want that. But you do want the this outer flange, you want that to fit down flush. Clearance for everything inside of these fuselages is at a premium, so bear that in mind from the start. that back up to the surface again, maybe, there we go. Squirt glue down inside there. I'm having trouble holding on to stuff because I've got CA all over my hands. There we go, and it goes. I'm just going to go ahead and put the glue in. We'll force it on down there. At this point, um, these stick up a little bit, so find some scrap plywood, balsa, whatever you've got on hand that qualifies as scrap and kind of fill in around them. Not all I'm really trying to do here is create kind of like a spacer effect between these guys and the, uh, the plating that goes on top of them. Of 
And then after that, you can sand those down to the level with blind nuts. Now, for these little plates that go in here, what you're going to want to do is for this one, the back, you're going to bevel it back that way, away from the hole. For this one, you're going to bevel it towards the hole. Um, I'm going to go off camera because I'm going to use a, a grinder to grind the taper on these. Okay. So what we have done is I have sanded, uh, this is the back mount, I've also beveled off to the sides. Because what's going to happen is, since, is the, the wing dihedral comes in like this, so we want these kind of flush over on the sides. And now I'm just going to squirt glue in here. And we just want to center that thing over the opening in there, like so. Excuse the background noise that refuses to go away. Set. Now, these guys, no matter how much glue you squirt in there, cannot support uh, full throw on this airplane in a reliable sense. Um, so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take some fiberglass and you're going to have to epoxy kind of a, a ring around here. And that's the last thing actually we're going to do um, on this pod uh, before painting it and, and all that type of thing. So what we're going to do next is we're going to glass this entire pod. We're not going to glass it with epoxy though. What we're going to do is I'm going to, uh, you can use um, water-based polyurethane or any number of other options. Um, I'm going to use what amounts to uh, Duco or Amroid cement for that. Um, and then after that is dry, we will epoxy these little rings on. Um, and then that'll be the kind of last step on, on that stage of things. At some point, most of you uh, in your configuration of this, uh, of this airplane are going to have your wires coming up through the middle uh, from your wing. And so they're going to come in here and they're going to need to go up forward. There's no gap here. So my personal recommendation, there are a couple of options. Um, if you can, uh, you can get in here to put holes through um, on the bottom, uh, kind of hard to get to that. What I recommend is drilling in through the top here um, to get uh, to get in here uh, to run those wires forward. Um, hopefully, I'm in the future once we firm things up a little more, I'm probably going to supply these bulkheads with that hole all, already drilled. Um, but uh, some of you will not. Uh, for those of you that are not building it with a rocket tube. Uh, this is going to be a kind of a late stage in the game to get in there to, to deal with that. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.